man today has already been a day it took me a while to get out of bed this morning and i think it's just because i've been going non-stop since i got on the road and after all of that plus a crazy action-packed day yesterday with charles and tony where they took me around this amazing loop and showed me all these places that i can go while i'm here my brain was just going oh too many tingles too many tingles and so i was very excited but that made getting up a little bit harder because i was just so comfortable and so relaxed and so happy and then i kind of got jolted into wake up because um i got a call from at&t now for those of you who do not have at&t let me explain what has been happening for us customers a couple months ago i got a letter in the mail saying basically oh you may have been a part of a data breach and they got hacked and in doing so i think it was like 75 percent of their customers information was put out into the internet somewhere um through this hack and so i was like oh no and at first i stressed out a lot and i was like okay they gave me free credit monitoring so i can go check all of that out and make sure everything's good i checked all of it out so far so good uh, but this morning they called, they had a customer representative call and that was a bit more concerning because they said, Hey, so we had another data situation where every customer has now been affected. As you can imagine, it's not a great way to start your day, especially if you've been having all these wonderful times and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, that can weigh pretty heavy on you. So I was just like, what does this mean? What do I need to do? Is there anything that is going to like change? Do I have to change my number? I don't want to change my number. I love my number. I don't want to have to go through the whole process of doing all this extra jumping through hoops. I just don't. At the same time, is this actually an issue? Because again, the other one hasn't been thus far. And they said, well, we're gonna continue monitoring and we'll be able to give more information after we fully figure out what's going on. To which I was like, great. So I just kind of sat there in my bed and normally in the mornings I do emails, I answer comments and I just kind of was like trying to do that and stay super positive. But at the same time I was like, oh no, this is not good. I feel like there's been a lot of companies who've been subjected to this as of late and it's really terrifying. So I made a proactive step in my personal life today that I could do one of two things. I could respond really poorly and just like let that bother me all day long when there's literally nothing I can do or I could find some positive. And so I decided I'm going to find positive because I'm in this gorgeous place. I'm in Kalispell today and I want to do something epic and enjoy my life and I will keep up with that and be responsible but I'm not going to let it consume my entire existence. Now this is a huge step for me because in the past something like this would have happened I would have just obsessed over it and been like oh no oh no literally when there's nothing I can do. So instead I am doing something for myself for my own mental sanity and I'm going to a museum today and I'm going to see what else I can get into and I'm just going to fill my day with things I can physically control the outcome of and I'm going to share all those things with you guys. So I have decided for my song of the day in a very fitting fashion that the song is That's Life by Frank Sinatra. I think that that's very fitting. And I'm gonna start off my day at a museum. I am gonna do some dedicated videos for this. I like to keep you guys in the loop as to what's going on in life and how this affects me as I am traveling on the road because a lot of you have to deal with, because let's face it, we all have to deal with real life stuff on the road and it can be really, really bad. And we can either sit in our vans and just stew or we could do, we could stew or we could do. And, and today we're gonna do instead of stew. And so I don't know what that's gonna look like, but I'll show you some of the details as to what I get into. Again, if anything is a dedicated video, it'll be after this one in order, and so you'll be able to see it. But for today, I'm gonna start off by going to this really cool place that Charles and Tony took me on the first day where they were like, this is one museum, this is the other museum. And I was like, oh my goodness, ah! <laughs> and then at some point in the day, I'm gonna do some other things as well. Not sure what that's gonna look like, but you guys are coming along and it's about to be a wild ride. So uh, buckle up, Buttercup, let's go. I wanted to follow up on this lip balm that I picked up, this uh, Dr. Squatch. This stuff has actually really been great for the altitude changes and also the weather as it's been going from hot to cold. 
I think you know by now I like to keep you guys in the loop on little stuff like this because it's handy and this is actually lasting a little bit longer than my other lip balm already. It's going through much slower. It's a thicker consistency. So if you are looking for something because of the changing weather, try this one, see if you like it. There's several different like flavors, so to speak. So yeah, um, also at some point, at some point today, I need to put up patches because yesterday I got my Montana patch finally. I picked up a huckleberry one because there's so many huckleberries. Everything in this area is huckleberry. I've already had a huckleberry bear claw, a huckleberry lemonade. Oh my gosh, that was good. Um, I've had huckleberry jam. I have had a huckleberry ice cream. I'm just going to huckleberry myself until I'm out of huckleberryness. I also got a glacier because I did go into glacier. And I think I got one more. Yes. I got the pole bridge, which I did a whole video on, and it was just a really cool historic mercantile that we had lunch at. And oh, when I tell you the lunch was so good, we had these rolls, basically. They have all these different kinds of rolls. And I had a spinach, oh, mm, yes so so good i even have another one it's a different kind in my fridge right now that i'm probably going to either have for lunch or if i end up meeting up with charles and tony i might eat it for like a snack later but so good so when you see that video put that on your bucket list because you're going to want to go there it's a little bit of a bumpy drive but definitely worth it and uh between the huckleberries and, and the rolls and the history i was just like all day yesterday, all day. But now I'm going in the museum, I promise. So yeah, the building that we're going in today is in old school. We're taking it back to the old school because I'm an old fool who's so cool. Do you know that song? Do you know that song? Hey, 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 this is the museum. Just got a patch. I just got a patch. I was in this museum for two hours. I don't think the average person is gonna spend two hours in here, but I got into an amazing conversation with the ladies inside. They are so kind here. Again, every person that I've met thus far in Kalispell has been absolutely awesome. And so I'm very eager to see what else I can get into today. I'm not sure what that's gonna look like, but I got some great feedback on some things I should be doing. So uh, it's around lunchtime. I'm gonna do some stretching. I'm a little stiff and sore from yesterday and then all the driving the day before. So I think I'm gonna do that and uh, then we'll see what we can get into. Okay, little update, got this guy charged up so I can put this in the back and I'm good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the DC on it because I'm not using it right now. Also the other day, I might have tweaked something just a little bit. Like I was walking uh, whenever I was at Teton and then at Yellowstone and along the way somewhere, I kind of, I don't know, I stepped weird. It's kind of hard to explain. It's just, it was a weird step. It wasn't a bad step where I like rolled my ankle or twisted it or anything, but it's like, it felt weird. And now I'm starting to feel like a hitch in my giddy up on my hip a little bit more. I felt it a couple days ago and I was like, oh, that's not super comfortable, but I'll stretch it out, no big deal. But I don't know if it's because I've been sitting and driving so much, it just kind of tightened. And I was like, oh, weird. Now I struggle with sciatica. It doesn't feel like the sciatica. Sciatica feels more central to the spine. So if the spine is here, this is more off on this side in like the hip, um, which is how I kind of went into the step. So I'm wondering if I kind of tweaked it a little bit. To fix that, I took some acetaminophen and I just put some Icy Hot on it so I can cover if it's a muscle or if it's an inflammation issue. That could change what I'm gonna do today just a little bit because I kind of wanted to go out and do some like super active stuff today. If it doesn't get better, I, I may have to do something a little less active. Uh, the museum was pretty decent when it came to like the movement aspect. The information aspect was amazing, but the movement aspect, pretty decent. But I only uh, noticed that it was really kind of uh, after I went down the stairs and it was like, whoa, okay. So the down motion was not great. You know, again, this is why we picked the song, That's Life. <laughs> some days uh, you're the dog, some days you're the hydrant. Today, I may be having a hydrant day, I'm not sure. We're gonna find out, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and look up some of the things that Charles and Tony showed me that we might wanna do and see which ones of those I think I can navigate best. 
there's so many things to do here. And I just, it's one of those things that there's so many things that I almost feel overwhelmed because I want to do them all. But at the same time, I can be mindful and not do all of them and then come back because I'm planning on coming back to visit them already. Okay, while I am sitting here and figuring this out, I'm gonna go ahead and do my patches real quick just because I like to keep them up to date and done. That way I don't have to deal with a whole bunch of them and then something happening and me misplacing them because that happens. Even though I normally keep them on the front, sometimes if I move a hat or something, it'll just fall and then they get stuck in a crevice. So instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do instead is just get everything out, go ahead and do these, stick them in their spot. And then that's one less thing. I like to keep good order on the road and routine. And routine normally is I don't let these sit very long. So while I'm resting and wiggling, trying to get the kink worked out in my back and waiting for the acetaminophen to kick in, I thought this was a great way for me to spend that little bit of time. Okay, all of this is now done. So we now have Montana and Glacier on this side. And then I have the Northwest Montana History Museum I just went to, the Pole Bridge Mercantile, and huck yeah! I also think I made an executive decision. I always am trying to figure out what to do with the extra Velcro. I think, because I have to get the scissors out of here, I'm going to put the Velcro into my little organizer with all my utensils also. So anytime I have to do arts and crafts time, I can just pull this out and then I can get those two items out and it'll make it easier. And then I don't have this random thing floating around with Velcro in it because that's been going in different directions, me trying to figure out where exactly it'll fit. It's just kind of been a lot. Okay, I found a park. I was going to come over here and eat lunch and then I discovered they have a whole bunch of stuff going on. So I thought, why not explore a little bit? I think they're doing an art day. So, uh, sure. Okay, so this is a really cool event and it's actually going on all weekend when I'm here. This is Art in the Park. It's an annual event for the Hockaday Museum, which is another really cool museum here in the community. Now, I figured out that it's $5 for a day pass or for an all weekend pass. For that, you can listen to live music. You can check out all of the different vendors that are here. You can buy art and things like that, but you're paying for the admission so that you can give that donation to the actual museum. It helps them do all of their stuff. I think this is epic. I think I might have to go and tell Charles and Tony about this. I'm sure they know, but at the same time, like now that I have the information, I might have to go share that and then maybe we'll come back. I don't know. I love finding local stuff. That is so neat. <sighs> it's hot though. We're gonna turn on the van, get cooled off just a little bit. And I definitely am gonna have to tell them, hey, hey, do you guys want to go to this? Because that'd be really fun. So inside the fridge I go and I have a little bag here on top. And inside that bag, I have two items of which this, this is the one I'm going to be eating. This is a spinach artichoke roll. And I probably should have heated this up, but I think it'll be fine cold too. Pole Bridge is known for so many things, including that history, but also the food. And when I had my little roll yesterday, oh my gosh, it was so good. In fact, the food there is so good that Charles and Tony told their family members they were going out there and they're like, hey, pick up some sweets because everyone synonymously knows just how delicious it is. Mm-hmm, this was like $6, well worth it. I decided that I was gonna drive out to something really fun that Charles and Tony showed me yesterday on our driving tour that I knew I wanted to circle back to. I wanted to circle back before the weekend when it gets the busiest. So I'm kind of taking a haul across. It's about a 27, 28 mile drive. So here we go. Okay guys, we're at South Lion Lake and this is really gonna be fun. This is close to the Hungry Horse Reservoir and I had come by this yesterday and Charles and Tony told me kind of a fun story, but um, I wanted to check it out for myself because we didn't stop here yesterday. So I thought this was a good place for us just to go get some beautiful lake views. So let's go. Locking up. 
no overnight camping here, but they do have a vault toilet. They have a little beach area. They ask that you not shoot out here. And look at this lake. beautiful here all of the water I've seen so far has either been like blue like bright bright blue or that like super bright green and Tony explained to me that it was because of the different kinds of minerals that they have here in the water so it's stunning but this is just a pit stop on the way to where I'm actually going which is down the road about three more miles Whew. it is a hot day and there are a lot of people out there swimming so I didn't want to just like linger because that's kind of weird but oh my goodness there's so many places to hop in the water here in montana at some point I, I may have to hop in water it just it looks so good it looks so good ho 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 maybe i'll figure that out maybe that can be one of the days that i'm here i just stay in the water somewhere well there's a lot more water to explore though so time to go for anyone who has not been to this section of Montana before, everywhere you look basically looks kind of like a postcard. That's the best way to describe it. Like, as I was driving here, I would go past mountain lake after mountain lake after mountain lake. Everything has trees all around it. Everything is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're, we're still not there yet, but just couldn't not stop here. Does that make sense? Like, couldn't pass up the opportunity, maybe, is the better thing to say. This is amazing. It's so beautiful. It's incredible. And it's a viewpoint that lets us see just how awesome everything is. Just for context, here's how small the van is in comparison to this ginormous, amazing space that we're in. So I'm parked on the side of the road. There's a couple pull-offs on this route as you're going out to the Hungry Horse Reservoir. And in this direction, look how incredible this is. Like I can zoom into this little road, but in all reality, we're way, way up here. The trees here are abundant. They're diverse. You see variations of the kinds of stone on the side of the mountain. You see open spaces that are absolutely beautiful, that tell the story of so many things. You can see where wildfire has ravaged the sides of mountains and that the trees are starting to grow back. It is just incredible. And again, this is just a roadside pull off. No big deal, no big deal. Anybody can stop here. We love a good free thing. So many people come to me and say, oh, I would love to do this, but I just don't think I can. And they list off a laundry list of reasons why they can't. From, I don't think I can buy a van and travel full time, to, oh, it costs too much, to, well, I just don't think that I could be on the road the way that you're on the road, to, oh, I'm just not mobile, things like that. And a lot of those things can quickly be debunked. No one's saying go sell everything and move into a van. Don't do that. Take vacations. Get out and see new things. Try something different whenever you can. Make it where it is affordable to you and also makes sense whenever it comes to the ability to be able to travel. I know not everyone's job is remote. I know not everyone can be on the road full time. I would never tell you to quit life, move into a van and live down by the river. But what I will tell you is, Take an opportunity to take a chance on yourself and instead of going on vacation, if you have vacation time or PTO, to the same places that you always go, look at something different. Look at something like this, a natural space. You would be surprised how many things within this natural space cost absolutely nothing. Just get yourself to it. That's all you have to pay for. And I know that that can be an expenditure that might not necessarily always be affordable if you're super far away. But that doesn't mean you have to come to just Montana. You can come to a natural space in any state and find a way to recreate and get outside. Moving the blood by moving around makes the endorphins happen and you have this sense of joy as you have a sense of wander. Not wonder, 
wander. Wander around, explore something new, find something epic. For those of you who struggle with getting around, there's tons of ADA trails. For those of you who struggle with being able to take off weeks on end, take a couple days here and there, or just even an afternoon, and go walk in a place that is beautiful and different. As often as you can, and you will see the quality of your entire life just start to change as you see beauty. You know, a lot of times we see all the nasty negative stuff that's going on in the world and we get really stuck in our heads. But when you take time out to just take a deep breath in nature, smell the fresh air, everything is a little better. Oh, so happy that I decided to come and take this drive today. This is absolutely fabulous. I've learned things at a museum for only $9. I had less than a tank of gas and I've made it all the way out to a huge reservoir, stopped off at a mountain lake in the meantime, and I am just experiencing life. All the while, this morning I woke up with a hitch in my giddy up and a really bad piece of news. It just goes to show that if you change the framing of your mindset from something negative to something positive, it can make all the difference. I'm having a good time with you guys, but I think I'm gonna wrap this one up. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. I'll be showing you some really cool things on the next video and the one after that and the one after that. And well, we're just gonna keep going on this adventure and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>